Hello, stream. I've just oh, Hudson's off. I've just got back from the most amazing cruise. I went to see the Northern Lights cruising into the Arctic Circle with Fred Olsen, which was absolutely fantastic. I do have COVID now, so please bear with me during this live stream. I'm feeling fine. I think I'm on the mend. I feel so much better than the first time I had COVID. But if I take a sneeze break or something, please bear with me. I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions as I can during this live stream. If you want those to be about Norway, the Northern Lights, Fred Olsen, and any other cruise line, anything not cruise related, that is totally fine. If you can start your comment with question in capital letters, that makes it so much easier for me to pick out what is a question. And apart from that, I just want to say hello to everybody who is already in the chat. Hello to everybody who is here. It is so nice to see you. I see some of us, the time difference has made things a bit confusing. Normally, we're in sync. But in the US, you've changed your clocks and we haven't changed them here in the UK yet. So I think that's why some people are in here a bit early. We are changing our clocks Sunday, I think. Well, I'm going to change mine on Sunday. Hello. We've got so many people in the chat. Hello to Gary. Uh, Paul and Carol are in here. I saw Kevin's in here as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to my live stream. I'm going to do the best I can on this stream. Uh, please give me some easy questions. Nothing that's going to take too much brain power. I've taken quite a lot of cold and flu medicine. So my brain is not at 100%. But I have been editing my next video about the Northern Lights. I'm really excited for you to see it. I was up until about, I don't know, half 11 last night editing so I didn't want to go to bed because I just wanted to get this edited so I think that is a good sign that's a good sign oh hello David is in here David life in Norway David is a guest speaker on board Fred Olsen and a Northern Lights expert and he says would you recommend Fred Olsen for Americans or non-Brits in general yes absolutely it was almost entirely Brits on board there are a few Americans that I found but it's very much a UK focused cruise line to the they even have custard creams in the buffet. That is as British as you can get, I think. But it was awesome. And I think, I don't know, I think if you're going to go somewhere, if you're going to travel somewhere, you might as well do something more local to there. You know, if you're going to take a cruise out of the UK, why not try a Fred Olsen, try a P&O cruise? If I'm going to go to Italy, like it's nice to take a Costa cruise rather than just take, you know, a Morella cruise with all Brits on it. As much as I love Brits, sometimes it's nice to cruise with people who are, you know, from different places so yes I absolutely think so I do I can't see any downside really of people who aren't British cruising with Fred Olsen I guess you would just maybe miss out on some of the trivia questions and stuff but that's about it uh, please tell us about the new merch. Yes, yeah, so I'm not I'm not ready to launch this yet. This is not ready yet, but I thought I'd give you guys a little preview because I have been testing things. So in the past, I've used all of the big merch sites that you get on YouTube, the Teespring, the T-Mill, and I've not been happy with them. The quality has been sometimes good, but sometimes bad, and that's not good enough. It has to be consistently good. And the sizing has been really weird, especially on Teespring. Sometimes you'll order a small and it will be four times as big as the small you ordered last time. So I'm not happy with that. So what I've been doing is I've been looking to set up my own store on my own website where I find the factories and I, I organize everything. So that, that's the plan. That does mean it's, it's a lot more work for me. I have to test these things. I've had some samples through that I'm not happy with, but the ones that I'm happy with are these t-shirts that I've made. So this is the first one that I have. Let me just put down the comment. And it's this one says, I'm here with Captain Hudson, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I made it kind of a bit of a distressed font, I think you would call it. And I quite like that. And these T-shirts just feel really nice. This is a really good size. So I'm going to be wearing these myself. And I think, you know, you have to want to wear your own merch. And I didn't really want to when I had the Teespring stuff. So this is the plan. Um, at the moment, I've got the US factory that I want to use. And I think what I'm going to do is launch it in stages. I'm going to launch it, I think, to Patreons and members first so that I can test it because <laughs> it's not easy. Then I'll move to opening the US factory. And then at some point, I would like to make a US, a UK version as I'm from the UK. But it's quite a lot of work. So it is happening. Um, but it will take take a little bit of time. I think in the next couple of weeks, it should be the US factory is open and you can order you can like I ordered to the UK from the US. Um, it's fine. It just takes a little bit more time. So that's that is all I'm, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Uh, Jan says, how did you enjoy the cookies on your latest cruise? So my latest cruise, I took a cruise to the very top of Norway and it was the worst seasickness that I've ever come across. <laughs> um, I have been cruising for 18 years. 
I have cruised 53 times, I think. And this was the worst for seasickness because it was the North Sea. It was March. We were on a smaller, older ship. I think all of those things just combined and it just hit me really hard. So my favorite cookies that I found on this cruise were ginger flavored because ginger helps you with seasickness. And they were good. They were very, very good. But it was very different. It was different. Um, Hazel says, what size will your t-shirts be available in? They'll be from small to 3XL initially, I think. This is a size small. They'll be unise unisex size. Si unisex size. <laughs> Oh my. If you have a question, please, can you start it with a question just so that I can pick it out? And if you can keep it shorter, I think that's more likely for me to pick it out just because I don't have the time to read. And I've got to take a gamble. If I see you and I recognize your name, of course, um, I'll do my best. But it's a bit tricky. Please don't think that I'm ignoring you. Yeah, as Sean says here, please start it with a question, especially since I'm not at 100% for sure. Definitely not. Um, how does the food on P&O compare to Fred Olsen? You know, the food was pretty good on Fred Olsen. I was quite surprised by it. I, I don't know what I expected from Fred Olsen, but I didn't really expect fantastic food. I just thought it'd be all right, but it was pretty good. Um, it's a similar style of food, I think. It's aimed at British people, if that makes sense. But I liked it, yeah. I'd say it's pretty the same. Maybe quality-wise a bit better on Fred Olsen, but a bit more choice on some of the P&O ships, maybe. But yeah. Comparable, for sure. Uh, what was the ship from Fred Olsen, and how many passengers can it hold? It was the Belletta, and it is Belletta, it is not Belette, and in my video that I've just recorded, my Northern Lights video that I've been editing, to be fair to me, I recorded that I had COVID, so I think it's all right that I made the mistake, but it is Belletta, apparently, not Belette. So it is Belletta, which was Amsterdam from Holland, America originally, and it was... I think it's like 1,200, something like that. So it's not a huge, a huge ship. Have you scheduled your first Holland America cruise yet? I have no, no Holland America cruises booked at the minute. They're more expensive than I thought they would be, possibly because they're not really near me. So I'd have to go quite far away. <laughs> How is Princess's food? Princess's food is always good, always good. <laughs> Lots of questions about Fred Olsen. I, the... It is like a family independent cruise line. Um, the Fred dot, it has a dot after it because it is it is a person. So apparently that's okay. <laughs> oh my God, there's so many questions already. Thank you so much. It's so nice to see you. <gasps> Fraser's in here. Hello from Dubai. Oh, 21 nights on MSC World Europa. Amazing. MSC World Europa looks amazing. I haven't managed to find any cheap deals on that ship lately. Um... I think you have to be organized if you want to book that one. Thank you so much, by the way, to our moderators who look after these chats. I would not be doing these live streams without you. I really appreciate it. How did you find the veggie menu on Fred? It was pretty decent. You know, if there was um like a main dinner or main lunch, there would be, say, like a third of the options would be vegetarian. So it's pretty cool. Stephen says, what do you do for a living? Right now, I run my own business. So when I'm cruising, I'm working. It's a strange business. If you want to know how my business works, how I make money, I totally understand because it's really strange. It's not a it's not a normal nine to five job. But if you go on my website, emmacruises.com, type in income, I've got listed on there all the ways that the business that I run makes money. I used to work in data development. I did a maths degree and then I don't use that in my current business, really. Do you think it was stereotypically British from Southern England? So interested in comparing. I think it's, I think it was very British. I had to drive to Newcastle to board this cruise. And I normally, you know, I live very close to Southampton, which is the biggest cruise port in the UK. But thinking about it, you know, when I booked this cruise, I was like, oh, it's, I wish it went from Southampton. I would be fine with another sea day at the beginning. Based on that first sea day and how seasick I felt, I'm glad that we drove and then got on the ship. Was it mostly English speaking? Yeah, 100% English speaking, I think. 99.9, .9, I didn't hear anyone speak any other language. How are you feeling this time with COVID? I'm feeling okay. It's definitely better this time. And I definitely think I felt worse over the last few days. So I think that I'm on the mend. If I compare how I feel now to how I felt the first time I had COVID, this is so much better. So, so, so much better. <laughs> They, I, I just love seeing, I can see the moderators looking after the chat and you guys are doing such a good, such a good job. 
Uh, David says, can you describe the moment when you saw the Northern Lights for the first time? Well, I think it was kind of a progressive thing. You know, I think the first time we saw anything was before we even got up to Tromso. There was a very slight green in some pictures that I took that I thought, hopefully that's not it. But I think that must be the Northern Lights because clouds aren't normally green. Um, then we then saw a bit more kind of on the top deck. I was at dinner. We missed dessert because it's worth missing dessert for the Northern Lights. They come and they go very fast, which I wasn't prepared for. And we saw this amazing show on the top deck. And we went back to bed then, went to our cabin because I was content. You know, I've seen that. I've stood outside for three hours. It's freezing. It's minus 12 degrees. And we saw more later, even better. So... Yeah, when we saw the really green, what you think of where it's got that kind of swirly pattern. Oh, it was just crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I was thinking about, I read this article recently. Maybe I watched a video. I don't know. Read an article, watched a video, same thing. And it was about the feeling of awe and how when you're an adult, you don't really experience awe so much because you've done everything before. <laughs> and it was about how experiencing new things and feeling like, oh my goodness, that makes you live longer and makes you healthier. So I was like, oh, this is good. This is a big dose of awe. It was absolutely crazy. It was so cool. Uh, Tony and Jenny are in here. Hello, Tony and Jenny. Thank you very much. Wishing you a quick recovery. Feel better. Yes. You can tell that my life is a bit strange because when I got COVID and I saw the positive test result, I was like, oh, that's terrible. But thank goodness it's now because I have got a few weeks on land. <laughs> so it doesn't affect any of my cruise plans. So that is good. <laughs> Yes. Oh, my goodness. So now I do have sympathy. Not that I didn't have sympathy before, but I couldn't really relate to people who'd driven a long way to the cruise port. <laughs> but yeah, now I do. Oh, my goodness. It's not so bad driving there because you're so excited, but it's driving back. And I don't know where I got COVID. I think I might have got it on the way back, you know, stopping in the service stations, going to the Burger King or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, Neil says, how do you research your cruise deals? So I personally now, I work with agents in the UK, the US. Uh, we work with people in Canada, people in Australia. So I see a lot of cruise deals come by. I have a, I have a lot of, you know, um, eyes on everything. If I want to book a cruise, say I want to book a cruise uh, with someone and I have a month that I want to do it in and I don't really care where I go and I don't have any plans, I tend to start on vacations to go just because that's a good place to get an overview. Um, be aware the prices on there are not the prices you'll pay. They don't include the taxes or the fees and it's an American website. But if I, you know, say I have September free, I want to take a cruise, I'll go on vacations to go, look for the cheapest cruises in the whole world in September. And then I will fill in my own form on my website. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I like to, I need to keep track of everything, including myself. <laughs> so I will fill in the form on my own website. EmmaCruises.com is the website. And then my agent, because I'm in the UK, my agent Emma will add the quote to my booking portal and I can accept it or decline it. And I'm going to spill this. So I'm going to drink it. <laughs> Any thoughts on the Fred Olsen drinks package? Oh, it's an interesting one. So you have a drinks package. Oh, my goodness. Um, which is about £25 a day on Fred Olsen called the All Inclusive Package. It's interesting because that price is a similar price to what I paid for the soda package on Costa. So it's very cheap for an alcohol package, but it's very restricted in alcohol. You can only have, there's like a cocktail a day and you will have that or you won't have, you won't, you'll help pay. <laughs> so if you're someone who just wants like an occasional, you know, if you like beer, uh, you want an occasional cocktail, like a glass of wine, I imagine that could be very, very good. For me, I didn't drink a single alcoholic drink on this cruise because I was, mostly dosed up with seasickness pills and it was bad enough and I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to drink anything on top of that so yeah Jamie says did you feel poorly on the ship I felt poorly at the beginning just from seasickness then when we got to the top I felt fine and then coming back down I took so many seasickness pills there was no way I was going to be awake <laughs> so I was fine uh, but I felt totally fine when I got home I tested uh, I tested negative but now I am testing positive <laughs> so that's that's how that tends to work do you think you do any cruises in Australia or New Zealand? I would love to. I look at this all the time. And I think it's, for me, it's the idea of spending that long in on a plane. You know, I, if I could do first class or business class, maybe. But I'd love to one day. Yeah, but I would, I'd want to take a lot of time. And, you know, yeah, that, yeah, I do look at it. 
What is the best sea sickness meds you have tried? I usually do one. I usually have one that is called. I don't know how to say it. It's like stew geron or something. I don't know. Normally that's what I have. That's been fine for me. But it did nothing. <laughs> it did nothing. And it puts me to sleep. So my favorite that I've tried before that has never let me down is one called Quells. If you're in the UK, it's very different in the US. The UK, they have different names. I can't get the ones that are in the US. Um, but Quells has never let me down. Matt says, easy question. Where did you get that purple dress? That's not an easy question because I've had it for at least five years. I'm not very good at the sort of influency stuff by being like, here's my dress. Here's the link. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I got it like five years ago. I think it was from somewhere like Dorothy Perkins. That would be my guess. But it was quite a long time ago. Thank you so much for my super chat. Going Princess Sapphire to Alaska. Oh my goodness. Amazing. I am so envious of that. Um, I will get back to Alaska soon. I promise. Tom says, do you think that the full cruise refund is dangerous for Fred Olsen? Uh, how many people do you think will do it? So on Fred Olsen's website, I was having a look the other day, I was doing a bit of research. Um, I saw a question earlier said, what is the average age on Fred Olsen? It's 67 from my research is 67. Um, and they have a promise where if you're on board in like the first two days, you don't like it, they'll let you get off, fly you home and refund you. And I think I've heard that it was like six or seven people have ever done that. So yeah. John says, I like your llama dress the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, for my super chat that contains four potatoes. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's about $5 a potato there, John, which, I mean, cost of living crisis feels like it sometimes. <laughs> uh, I haven't tried the patches. I When I came back, I thought maybe I would do the patches, but I'm seasick so rarely that I don't want to take... I don't want to take stuff just in case the seas are going to be rough. Um, and with sea sickness patches, you seem to have to take them for a longer time. I had messages from people saying that they hallucinated on them and all kinds of terrible things. So I don't, yeah, I, I'm going to stick with the pills that I can just take on the odd chance. You know, it's it's one in 10 cruises where I get seasick. It's not normal. <laughs> what do you think about Rich's Captain Hudson cartoons? This is a fantastic, fantastic thing that I really want to show you guys. I'm afraid I can't show you the, noise the audio the sound the music that's the word music because i will get copyright claims on my channel and i don't want that but i forgot to bring captain hudson with me on this cruise i know it was my fault i forgot and rich <laughs> started making animations into our into our facebook group about what hudson was getting up to without me so it kind of started with you know, a, a little gif of him dancing or something. And it went into full blown movies and they're absolutely fantastic. So I do have some in here and um, I don't, I can't play the sound. So what I can give you is I can give you some background sound and I can play the movie and then I can blow my nose if that's all right. So <laughs> just, just, just look at this, right? We're going to play some music. I don't know, but let's play the thing. Also, if you can hear that sound, let me know because I'm gonna have to turn that off. Um, so here is here is a video. <laughs> Enjoy. Hopefully you can hear me now and you don't hear any music. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I have no idea how to do animations at all. And I, on my cruise, the Wi-Fi was not great. I could not see much, but it would let me see these. I couldn't reply. I couldn't comment on them, but it would let me see these. And I thought they were fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nora, for my super sticker. I really appreciate it. I <laughs> love Captain Hudson cartoons. Yes, they're fantastic. Brilliant. Love it. It's even better with the music. So if you are not in our Facebook group, just search Emma Cruises on Facebook and you will find it. Yeah, the Pac-Man dots were dreamies. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so sweet. Love it. That's cool. Awesome. Brilliant. Yes, it's amazing. 
<laughs> his own TV show. It's amazing because, I mean, all that Rich had to go on was this sort of graphic of him sitting down. So he made him stand. He made him walk. I like how he walks on two feet. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Oh, I feel sad for Hudson with the last scene. Hurry home, mummy. I have another one. I'll show you a bit later if I need to sneeze. Um, where Hudson finds out I have COVID. That's quite funny as well. <laughs> but it's very good. Yeah, I love seeing them too. It made me laugh. It made me laugh. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't mean to leave him at home. And I'll try and take him next time. But yes. Have you ever done a transatlantic crossing? And if so, what is the sea like? I have not. And I've tended to stay away from transatlantic crossings because of, you know, how seasick sometimes I get. It's not normal. But if I, you know, on this cruise, we had one sea day and I felt absolutely awful. And if I couldn't have got off that ship for another four days, five days, oh, I would have hated it. So seasickness is I think people underestimate it, but it is horrible. It's really, really awful. Um, so now I would only do a transatlantic on the Queen Mary 2. That is that is the plan. That ship is so smooth. She's an ocean liner. I cruised on her briefly and you couldn't even tell when she was sailing or not. So I would like to do a transatlantic, but I probably would only do it there. Yes. Uh, where is Hudson tonight? He was here, but I gave him some dreamies, so now he doesn't need to be with me. I will say, since I have been sick, he has just been staying away from me. He has no interest in being near me when I'm sneezing and coughing and snotty and stuff. He just doesn't care. <laughs> uh, what are some common misconceptions that people have about cruising, and how would you address them based on your own experiences? It's really interesting because it depends on where someone is from what they say to me if they don't know anything about cruising if i speak to someone who's never taken a cruise they're from the us they think it's a party cruise they think everyone's strong they think it's spring break belly flop competitions into the pool and if i speak to someone in the uk they think it's honestly like the titanic like you have to wear full length ball grounds every single day that's what they think um <laughs> and I, I, I just say, you know, both those things exist, but there's literally every single thing in between. If you're someone who wants to do formal nights, there's plenty of cruise lines. If you're someone who never wants to dress up, plenty of cruise lines for that. If you're someone who, you know, on Fred Olsen, it's an older passenger demographic typically. So the things on the schedule are like book clubs, bridge lessons, watercolor painting, like lovely things like that, which is very different from if you take a carnival cruise. You know, they've got Mr. Sexy Legs competitions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah rich he says hudson is a smart cat doesn't want covid yes absolutely did you use your balcony or was it too cold yes i used it so much and i always have said i know everyone says that you're an inside cabin cruiser i am but from the beginning i have always said norway is a place that is worth getting a balcony absolutely and if you're going to see the northern lights Absolutely. The best Northern Lights display we saw was from our balcony when we had given up, we were content, we'd seen what we wanted to see, we went back to our cabin and we saw something even better. So of all the places in the world, I think Alaska and Norway, if you can <laughs> get a balcony cabin, absolutely worth it. It was freezing. Of course it was freezing, but you're not about to miss that. And at least if it's freezing and you're in on the balcony, you can think, oh, I'm going to go put another pair of trousers on. I'm going to put a third pair of socks on because <laughs> it literally was that. Um, Kevin's here, 13 Awake Up, and he says, I entered the sexiest man contest on Royal and lost badly. Oh, that is sad. <laughs> I would never, I'd never have the nerve to enter and en do anything like that. Ooh, Nora says, going on a princess uh, cruise to Norway and doing your itinerary, where should I go to see the Huskies, please? Ooh, so I did the Huskies in Alta. Um, Alta? Alta? I can't remember how to say it. My brain is not working. But the, the northernmost place that we went to, I went to see the Huskies. And it was called, like, the Northern Lights Husky something, something, something. Uh, Penelope says, when are the Hudsons due? Any idea? The last I heard is we are on track for our original date, which was early April shipping out. So I, the last I've seen is that they are putting the whiskers in his face, which means that they must be nearly done. It is nearly April. So I think we're all on track for the original plan. And then as soon as that happens, I'm going to start working on version two, which is very, very cool. Reese says, did you find Fred more premium than the traditional big American cruise lines? In some ways, yes. The service was absolutely fantastic. And it was definitely more premium in that way, in terms of the crew. It felt like there was double the amount of crew than you would find on a big American cruise line. And it was things like they would seat you in the buffet. Like you don't have to even find your own seat in the buffet. There were, there were 
take you and they will seat you down. And when the buffet is about to close, they will go around to every single table and they will say, we're about to close. Do you want to get anything? They don't do that in the big American cruise lines because they don't have the time. <laughs> so in that way, yes, um, they would, if you looked cold, they would offer to get you a blanket, things like that, which were pretty cool. So I think what you're paying for is the service, the space per person um, and the crew per person. That's what I think. If Hudson was a human, which cruise line do you think he would prefer? Oh, that's a tricky question, but I like it. I think Hudson's pretty casual. I don't think he really likes being told what to do. So I think he would do like a Norwegian cruise line, maybe a Morella, <laughs> something like that. Uh, 811 watching and 266 thumbs up. Give that thumb a tickle. It is free. <laughs> Thank you so much. Kevin does lots of live streams on his channel. He is always on cruise ships. He lives on cruise ships now. So he is an expert on live streaming. So um, I appreciate you pointing out the like thing because it does make a big difference to YouTube. Um, <laughs> how do you find party cruises from the UK? I struggle to find them. It depends what you mean by party cruises. If you're looking for you know short themed cruises they're always going to be sort of three to five nights i would say so i would filter by three to five nights um there's not that many really going from the uk themed cruises that i can think of uh, we're waiting still for the 90s noughties whatever it's going to be morella cruise next year but they haven't announced it yet they haven't announced it how many cruises total so far i've been on 53 cruises if you count everything if you count every single like new ship launch that's one night if you count every single um you know ferry <laughs> every single everything 53 <laughs> which i understand sounds absolutely crazy it's quite funny to me you know i took my first cruise i was 11 i took my next one i was 13 then i was 17 i think um you know every every few years until I started obviously doing this for work. And then 2019, I took quite a lot. 2020, I took zero obvious reasons. And 2021 and 2022, we have taken a lot, um, a, a lot better paced this year, I think, than last year. I was just so excited to be outside. Uh, what is normal cruise attire? I want to take my wife on a cruise and want to know what's the best way to dress. So during the day, on every cruise that I can think of, you would just wear jeans, a t-shirt, a hoodie, normal clothes, whatever you want to wear during the day is totally fine. Um, the only kind of dress codes that come into play normally are in the evenings. And it will range from on some cruise lines. If you take a cruise with a cru cruise line like Cunard, they have formal nights. And on the formal nights, you have to wear a jacket and a tie and a long dress and that is in place 6 p.m onwards across the entire ship that is the most strict that you'll find on some cruise lines if you do a cruise with a cruise line like norwegian there's no dinner dress codes at all so it literally goes between those most cruise lines i will say per week they'll have one or two suggested formal night celebration night gala night they'll call it something like that and it'll either be a kind of invitation to dress up or there may be some dress codes in place. Um, that's pretty normal to have, you know, out of a week cruise, one formal night or two formal nights, and the rest will be informal. Uh, in the day, you normally just have to have shoes on and a shirt, <laughs> shoes and a shirt uh, to eat. So if you're outside by the pool deck, it doesn't really matter. Stephen says, did you enjoy Iona? Please be honest. I think the fact that I booked Iona while I was on Iona, which I've never done before, I've never booked the same ship while on a ship before, should say everything that, that needs to be said about Iona. So I have videos about Iona. Check them out on my um, channel. <laughs> That's the word. Channel is the word. Matt says, how was the entertainment? So obviously Fred Olsen are more... It's a small ship. You know, they're not going to have Broadway style musicals. They actually have a proper theater, though. They don't describe it as a theater. They call it like the show lounge or something. But it's a proper theater. I was kind of expecting it to be like my Azamara cruise, where it's just a lounge. But it's definitely a theater. They have a theater team, singers and dancers. Um, they have comedians. They have trivia like three times a day. They have dancing. They have watercolor lessons. They have uh, like the indoor shuffleboard. They have all kinds of games. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty standard cruise, you know, what you would think of from a cruise, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> uh, this might be a strange question, but do you consider cruises to be travel or consider it more of a vacation? I think it's both. I, I, th I don't think I would consider it. it's a vacation where you travel. <laughs> I don't know how else to answer that. <laughs> Uh, opinions on viking viking are fantastic if you can afford viking take a viking cruise uh, of course a viking cruise is more 
it's a more premium cruise, but you're not going to find um, it's more relaxing cruise as well. So you're not going to find well, they do have a theater, they do have shows in there, but again, you're not going to find Broadway star musicals. They're fairly small ships. Our uh, food is amazing, so so good. They have underfloor heating in all the bathrooms. You can drink from the mini bar. Ugh, that's good, very very good. I only spent four days on a Viking cruise on a press trip in twenty. 18 maybe so that's my experience with viking and and still it still affects me yeah no kids on viking absolutely i definitely was the youngest by a long way on my viking cruise yeah where is lou lou is our viking expert he is not here the one time we talk about viking and our viking expert isn't here uh lucy's mom hello lucy's mom did you find the tea rooms on Belletta? yes we did there are a couple of kind of there were quite a lot of lounges on board. There was never any problem getting a seat. And there were a few that felt as if I think they've refurbished them really recently. And the tea room was one of those. And the other one's called like the earth room or something. They also have a really big observation. You know what it's called when they have like a big observation lounge at the top where you can see out. They have one like that. I did see the pictures of Lucy in the atrium on Valletta. That was very, very cool. <laughs> Viking is expensive, must get rich. I think, I think... If you were someone who was going to go on a cruise and you were going to buy everything that's included in a Viking cruise anyway, it's not expensive. But for someone like me who wouldn't pay for daily excursions anyway, the fact that they're included, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, love your hair. Thank you very much. It's finally, I think this just looks like a hairstyle now. It's been... Um, I did my head shave. I shaved my head for charity, just in case anyone's wondering. I did my head shave in May. So quite a long time. I feel like I finally have a hairstyle, <laughs> which is very, very good. Uh, hello to my mum, who's in the chat. Nice to see you. Uh, do you have any future Viking cruises planned? No, I do not. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Been binging your channel all day while working. Thank you so much. That's very cool. That is Absolutely the goal of anyone on YouTube, I think, to be a bingeable channel. Bingeable. We've got 900 people in here, which is pretty good. I think people are checking in to see how I'm doing with COVID. I'm all right. I'm okay. <laughs> Would you say that Fred ships are mobility scooter friendly, being that they are older? Yes, I think they are. Um, the ship that I went on was launched in 2000 for Holland America. So it, it looks very Holland america -y. They haven't changed all that much about it. Um I will just say the only thing that I think is the lifts are very, very busy. The elevators are very busy because everyone is using them, <laughs> if that makes sense. So for me, it was it was quite good because I could run up the stairs and bypass everyone else in the lifts. Uh, if money wasn't an issue, would you do a world cruise? I don't think I would do a traditional world cruise in the sense that, you know, you see those ones come up and it's 200 nights and it's this epic itinerary on one ship. Fred Olsen do quite a lot of world cruises. Um, but I don't think I would do a world cruise on one ship. For me, it's so exciting to get on a new ship. And also with my channel, people are not going to be interested in, oh, I'm eating in the same restaurant I ate in 65 times. <laughs> um, for me, I really like getting on a new ship. I think that's the coolest thing. So I would want to do two weeks on this ship, a week on land, go on a train, a week on a different cruise. I'd absolutely love to go around the world on cruises, but I don't think I would just book one with a cruise and, and and unpack and that's it i would want to try everything would you consider the similar arctic norway cruise with ambassador from tilbury if so what tips it to choose fred i would absolutely pick fred olsen over ambassador based on this is tricky because i've spent eight hours on the ambassadorship and nine days on fred olsen but for me uh, <laughs> it's tricky. The ship for Ambassador didn't feel like they'd looked after it in the same way as Fred Olsen. On Fred Olsen, you could tell how much everybody loved that ship. Nothing felt damaged, nothing felt scuffed. On Ambassador, a lot of things, it felt like they hadn't spent enough money refurbishing it. So you have a look at little things like the taps. I know it's a small thing, but the taps on Ambassador were obviously the original ones. <laughs> and on Fred Olsen, everything was nice and new. Uh, we had a lot of problems on the Ambassador cruise. The air conditioning didn't work. The toilets didn't work. And it felt a lot older of a ship than the Fred Olsen cruise that I took. Um, also, I mean, I was only on board for eight hours, so it was very tricky to get, you know, great service or anything. But every no one seemed particularly happy on that Ambassador cruise crew-wise. Our cruise had been cancelled while we were at dinner, so maybe that had something to do with it. But I would definitely pick Fred Olsen over Ambassador every single time. Every single time. 
David says, did you try the brown cheese? David made me buy some brown cheese um, and I gave it to my mum and I thought maybe I could try some, but then I got COVID. So I haven't seen her, <laughs> but mum is loving it. She sent me a message earlier saying how much she's liking the brown cheese. Yes, mum says it's very, very nice. There we go. Well, mum likes cheese. It's like a chocolatey caramel cheese thing. So I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Celebrity Edge. I do have a cruise booked on Celebrity Edge. Woohoo! Very excited about that. Very excited. Um, have you ever seen the same performers when being on a different ship? I don't think so. Uh-uh-uh. Also, this is the first live stream I've done in so long where the sun had not set at the beginning of the live stream, and now it is going to set. But we are changing our clocks on Sunday, so yes. Have you rebooked on Ambassador? I've not rebooked on Ambassador. I'm not in a massive rush to take an Ambassador cruise. Never say never. You know, I might do it if a decent price came up. But there's there's many other cruise lines that I would like to try first. Like, I'd love to do a Holland America cruise. I'd like to do, like, you know, a Hertegruten cruise. A Great Lakes cruise would be the dream. Maybe, like, um, some more river cruises would be really nice. There's lots of other ones. Uh, what is the best budget cruise? There's a million different answers to your question. So I think whenever I get a question that says, what is the best cruise blank? I can't give an answer because it will be wrong for so many people. But what I have done is I have made a guide on my website that has all the major cruise lines and it, it link it lists them all by, you know, formality, price, how busy the daily schedule is, everything like that. That's free to download on my website. I think if you go emmacruises.com, it's the first thing that comes up. That should give you an idea. If you look at the budget ones, you can look at the cheapest ones by price. And then you might see, oh, that one's really formal. I don't like that. That one's really casual. I like that. That should give you an idea where to start. Because I don't want to just say, oh, Costa's the best budget cruise. Costa's a great budget cruise. But if you really don't want there to be other languages on board, that's a terrible choice for you. Or p and a great budget cruise. But if you don't want British people, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Um, do you know if France or the UK have changed any COVID protocols recently? My transatlantic cruise just survived testing no longer required. I don't know anything that needs tests in the UK anymore. I think that is long gone. Uh, for my Fred Olsen cruise, there was no test. There was no need to be vaccinated as far as I know. Um, I think, I think that's it. <laughs> my mum says it has a caramel taste to it. It is hard cheese. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the nice messages, by the way, saying, you know, get well soon. I appreciate it. It is nice. Robert says, is Azamara the most luxury line you have cruised? And would you cruise with them again? I would cruise with them again. Uh, the most luxurious is definitely Viking, for sure. But the most luxurious I've paid for, probably Azamara. I will say, though, I think, you know, there's certain luxurious things in every cruise line. Like on Fred Olsen, I was so impressed with the service and the crew. And there were more crew and better service on Fred Olsen than Azamara for sure. And also on Azamara, we had a few things break, like with our cabin and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think it's swings and roundabouts, as they say. Some things are best. <laughs> Some things are better. <laughs> I just wrote, wow, this whole stream is worth it for the cheese. Worth it for the cheese. Thomas says, is Hudson being extra nice to you as you recover? No, he's just ignoring me. He's ignoring me completely. Oh, I didn't realize my tissues are in sight. They're not tissues. Do people buy tissues? I just use pieces of toilet roll. <laughs> there you go. Cruise hack. How you can save money so you can afford more cruises. Never buy tissues. <laughs> Uh, when is the next head shaving cruise? Definitely not. I've shaved my head for charity twice and I don't want to do it again. <laughs> That is why we made the Captain Hudsons this time. I thought that was a good way to make money, but without having to shave my head. And we will we will have raised about 12,000 US dollars, I think, from Captain Hudson, round one, which is crazy. So we'll be making version two, which is pretty cool. There we go. We found someone who buys tissues. Amazing. <laughs> Brown cheese is awful, says David. No, David, I don't believe it. You've been trying to get me to eat it for ages. <laughs> Um, I hope you're feeling better. Have you considered branching out from cruising to do multi-day train journeys? Absolutely not. I would find that so boring. <laughs> Gotta be honest. Because I get travel sick, I can't do anything when I'm in a train. So I would literally just have to stare out the window for multiple days and I'd find that really boring. Gotta be honest. <laughs> About to make some tea to help with my cold. Yes, I have peppermint tea. Cheers to everyone who is drinking tea to help with their cold. 
Meredith says, waiting for Hudson version 2 to help whatever charity you want to. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to stick with Mercy Ships and just make it so that every time I make the plushy toys, they're for Mercy Ships. Because they seem like such a nice charity. Um, it fits in really well with my channel, I think. I think it's nice to see ships doing something nice. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. <laughs> nice mug. Thank you so much. Um, oh yeah, it says, adventure, I'll pack up my bags. I don't know where this came from. I think this was a gift a long time ago. Hot Ribena is what you need. Yeah, I don't have any Ribena. I've got some Vimto. I could do hot Vimto. That's the same sort of thing. Hazel says, will Captain Hudson version 2 be different from 1 in some way? Yes, I think so. I want them to kind of be unique so that I can have one of each one. And then when I have my new YouTube background, I'll have like Hudson 1, Hudson 2, Hudson 3. And then it makes it kind of exciting, I think, that it's slightly different. So, so many people have bought, actually bought or requested the little life jacket for Captain Hudson that I got. So I might do one with a like a little fabric life jacket on. I think that would be really cute. And then when people get on cruises, they can take him, <laughs> which will be so fun. And then, yeah, I'll make, you know, this is not ready yet. This is just a preview, but t-shirts like this one says, I'm here with Captain Hudson. I would like to get this on, you know, mugs and hats and not just that, but you can make you can make different passport holders and everything like that. But it's taking some time just because I want to, I want to have a sample of every single thing before I sell it, because I think that's fair. Oh, he looks funny if he squishes. Oh, <laughs> squishes little face. Oh, I don't know what that means, but Mercy Ships has a four star rating. That is good. Happy with that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Oh, could go to Wisconsin fried cheese curds. Oh, I have been to Wisconsin a few times, but yes. I'm not basing my cruises just around cheese, I promise. <laughs> have you been on Avia yet? I haven't. I have no plans to go on Avia. It looks awesome. Uh, my family, who I took on Iona, I took my nieces on Iona. I think they would be very interested in Avia. Um, but I have no plans yet, just because I've done Iona twice, and she's pretty much the same. So yes. Captain Hudson cruise card holders. Yes, that would be awesome. The The sky is the limit. I'm thinking sort of things to go on luggage as well. Maybe some like big stickers to go on luggage. I think that would be cool. Uh, my suitcase is, it's on its last legs. Let's say that. When I went to collect it, it was all open. Um, it was still fine, but I filled it up very, a lot. Uh, so when I collected it, <laughs> it was quite full. Cool. But I think the first time that suitcase broke was in, it must have been 2021 actually. So it struggled on two years since it first broke. Um, I should buy a new one. <laughs> it's definitely an investment, I think, that I should invest in. <laughs> yeah, luggage tags, yep, stuff like this. Um, I think really what's going to happen is I'm going to launch first phase, the US factory that I know once I've got all of the samples, um, and then I'm going to expand out. But I want to, I want, I don't want to just stick my logo on something and sell it. That's, you know, what I did before. That's what most people do. But um, we had so many problems with quality and stuff. So I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. So, um, Yes. When was your last non-cruise holiday? Oh my goodness. Not a clue. N not since the pandemic. Not 2019. 20... No, not 2018, I don't think. 20... Six... 2017, maybe? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <coughs> Is Captain Hudson named after the 17th century explorer? Perhaps. I didn't name him. Um, he's an adopted cat. He's a cat's protection cat. So when I got him, he was already five years old. He had already been called Hudson for a while, so I just kept that name. When is your next video scheduled to post? So I have been editing this the last couple of days. I think, well, I tend to work best in the evenings, and I I think I probably will work late tonight into the evening. Um, so hopefully late tonight, or maybe early tomorrow, I will have the video ready, and it will be out for early release for the Patreons and the channel members. Um, if you want to join my Patreon, it's just called Emma Cruises, keeping things simple, but it'll be out for early release tonight, tomorrow maybe, and then I think Monday evening, I'll put it out for general release. So pretty soon. I am going to make a separate video about the Fred Olsen part. This is more about the Northern Lights part. It still shows the ship. I still talk about the food and stuff, but I wanted to split those up. My idea was, oh, if I split these up, I can do two 10-minute videos instead of one 20-minute video. Still 20 minutes long somehow. I don't know. 
uh, hit the like button. Yes, please. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much for your likes, by the way. Thank you for the comments. Uh, I try and keep up with them as much as I can. I'm sure you understand. It gets a bit crazy, but I do my best. Uh, Robert says, feel better. COVID is no fun. It is no fun. It's much better this time, though, I think, than the first time around. So fingers crossed I'm on the mend and it will get a bit better. Uh, any plans to be on a 2023 cruise with Tony and Don? No plans to at the minute, but that would be very, very cool. Um, they are doing a British Isles cruise, but I'm not here then. I'm in Germany, so I won't be able to do that cruise with them. But hopefully I will see them when they get back. Also, the cruise that they're taking around Britain was the exact one that I did last year. So I did it last August. Um, so I've been to all the ports and stuff already. <laughs> Emma, please find a way for dog lovers to buy Captain Hudson and have it set to Mercy ships for the kids uh, yeah, dogs dog lovers can absolutely buy captain hudson he's not real <laughs> so you don't really have to pick a cat or a dog side um i love dogs i love cats but yeah i'd like a dog but it just i couldn't fit a dog in my life right now that would just be mean to the dog i think um i was on fred olsen's balletta balletta i definitely thought it was called ballet that's how i've been reading it in my head the entire time but balletta is how the captain said it and i think you, you can trust the captain of how they're going to say it. That didn't make sense. My brain's getting a bit bit tired, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean, for the link to my Patreon. Uh, we have 500, 505 thumbs up. That's pretty crazy. He's not real. Well, he is real, but I think he represents more than just himself. Hudson's real. Hudson the cat is real. But this Hudson that does these animations and stuff, um, he's pretty awesome better than a real cat so i'm going to show you the next animation that we have from rich thank you so much rich you made this uh did you hear any music before because if you did i'll put some music on for you again <laughs> and i'm gonna sneeze blow my nose or something <laughs> making me tear up right here's the music enjoy i can't hear it but maybe you can and then i'm gonna put the video on ready steady go so this, you're going to miss, um, in the background there's me coughing. So imagine that that's there, because I couldn't include the sound. I think that is so funny. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Rich. Uh, fantastic ideas. And I love the attention to detail. Maybe, I don't know if everyone else notices it it's the same way I do, but it even has this in the background. It has my map in the background. It has Pepsi there. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I saw a comment from Andy and Kirsty. It says, good to know we pronounced Balletta correctly in our videos. We did. You have some fantastic videos about it. I think I watched every single one pre-cruise and it really helped, especially with the food. You know, I wasn't expecting amazing food on Fred Olsen. I don't know why. Um, but there's some great food in those videos. So, yes, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Didn't forget Pepsi. Imagine Hudson trying to carry Pepsi. I don't think he could even carry one Pepsi. Lynn says, is this the first time you've had COVID? No, this is the second time, and I'm feeling much, much better this time. I will say the first time, and this time, I think it came from Norway. So um, <laughs> make of that what you will. Norwegian COVID. Owen says, do you keep some things packed in your suitcase between cruises? I don't, I never have. And I think I should, you know, I'm always like, oh, where's my hairbrush? I could own more than one hairbrush. <laughs> it would solve me a lot of problems. It would solve me a lot of problems. Oh my goodness. Tricky, tricky, tricky. 
great animations. Yeah, they're really good. Honestly, if you if you're not in our Facebook group, um, just search Emma Cruises on Facebook and join us in there because it just makes me laugh. The sound is so much better. I'm sorry that I can't share it on here. It doesn't do it justice, but I don't want to get any sort of copyright um, claims on my videos. Oh, exciting. Uh, your videos inspired me to take my first cruise to Norway and Iceland. That is the highest praise I can get. Thank you so much. Please come back and tell me that you loved it. Uh, quite often I'll meet people on cruises and they'll say, Hi, oh, Emma, I booked this cruise because of you. And then for a few seconds, I'm like, oh my goodness, please say that you like it. And they always say they liked it. No one's ever said that they didn't like it. Um, I've only met one person on a cruise who just really seemed like they wanted just to tell me everything was wrong. And I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I know things go wrong on cruises, but, you know, even if I... I mean, my last cruise, I got terribly seasick. Terribly seasick. Worse than I've ever been seasick. I picked up COVID, but it was still worth it. You know, still good. <laughs> Do you keep or collect anything from each cruise you go on? I only keep my cruise card, and I have them in a folder now. So I've got a proper folder. Uh, for It's for credit cards, but it's got loads and loads of slots in it and it has all my cruise cards in order i'm missing a few because when i was 17 or something i didn't really care about keeping the cruise cards but apart from that i have them but i don't get i don't buy souvenirs if that's what you mean anything anything else yeah that's such a good idea leaving my brush and hairdryer at home uh have travel brushes hairdryer and toothbrush absolutely genius uh, yeah i should do that for sure <laughs> but it's okay i know where most things are now uh, since you prefer to travel with someone, have you considered another content creator as a roommate? Uh, never say never, but I've not really considered it just because I don't, I, I don't know anyone that well to share a room with them. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe sometime, maybe, maybe. Do you still need to do a COVID test before getting on a ship? It, um, I don't know of any where the answer is yes anymore. If you do, let me know, but I don't know of any. Um, yeah, we didn't on my last cruise. Uh, Dutch Disney says, how do you find all the time for your cruises? It's much easier now that I run my own business because I just carry on working when I'm traveling. It really makes no difference. And I'm hope hopefully you can't tell if you sort of book a cruise for us, if you, uh, you know, book a consultation with me or buy my course, you shouldn't be able to tell if I'm away or at home. I try to set it up like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I used to, I used to have a normal job. Of course I did. <laughs> And I used to have my, I used to get this MSC little squishy stress ball and I had it on top of my screen and I'd have my cruise date and then every day I'd move it a little bit, a bit further. Uh, have you booked the Viking River Cruise? Yes, I'm doing it again very soon. End of May, I'm doing that cruise. So I did it last year. It was absolutely fantastic. And I wanted to do it again, which is very rare. I, I don't normally do that, um, but I'm doing it again. So yes, I, ha I have a confession to make though. This is a uh, Viking cruise where you bike a lot. And last time I practiced a lot to get ready for it. The last time I was on a bike was on the cruise last year. <laughs> so yeah. fingers crossed, it'll be okay. I'm looking forward to it. How amazing is that central clock on Balletta? It's amazing. <clears throat> we were there one time when um it, it it's did whatever it did. I don't know what it does at the o'clock, but everything twisted, all these cogs went around. It was so cool, so cool. Uh, why does your YouTube wall award have a corner missing? It doesn't. It's a light. This is um the light. It's a reflection of a light. Is it? <laughs> it is a light. How soon before a cruise does P and O assign guaranteed cabins? Anywhere from the second you book up until when you get on board. <laughs> Normally two weeks, maybe a month ahead, I think would be normal, but it's not that weird to be waiting two days in advance. Yeah. Uh, maiden voyage, yay or nay? I think a maiden voyage is a risk. For me, it's absolutely worth it because, you know, this is my channel. But if you're if you're waiting for two years for something and you're pinning your hopes on it, and then it's quite likely that it'll be moved. The maiden voyage is... Um, it's just more risky because they might not be done in time. That happens quite a lot. Uh, thank you so much to my new YouTube member. I will talk to you on the inside, but now you have access to 140 something podcasts, our Discord chat, early access to videos. Uh, we do Zoom calls. If you're on the Zoomy tier, which is the balcony tier and higher, we'll be doing our Zoom call on Sunday. Um, I've had a few messages saying that people thought that I wouldn't, 
uh, will be cancelled, but it is going ahead as planned. So yes, there's lots of um, lots of stuff happening behind the scenes. I did my podcast this week. I did it on Tuesday, and I didn't know I had COVID then, and I felt all right. I felt fine, but the comments, especially from Owen, were like, "Emma, you sound sick." <laughs> <laughs> and Owen said to me, hopefully it's not COVID. And I said, nah, it's fine. I tested negative yesterday. Well, I tested um, positive the day after. Brad says, with Fred Olsen, can everything be done online? Printing boarding passes and luggage tags as I want to book one from abroad. Oh, I'm sure you could request that, yes. But as a standard, Fred Olsen still send out your tickets and they send out your luggage tags. Um but I can't see any problem with you requesting them by email, but just know that it wouldn't be the default thing for sure. Is it silly to bring crafts on a cruise? First cruise has five seaters. Absolutely not. It is silly to not be prepared. If you've got multiple days at sea, bring anything that would entertain you. You know, I think back now when I used to cruise and I just started my job out of university, I used to revise and I think now I'm like, I wish I could get that time back that I spent revising for insurance exams that I don't even work in insurance anymore. <laughs> but do, yeah, do whatever you need to do. Bring whatever you need to do. That's totally fine. Uh, Owen says, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rich has booked on Icon's maiden voyage. Hope it goes to plan. Yeah, I mean, I think you have the absolute right attitude. And I think if it does get moved, you'll be fine. Um, but some people really pin all of their, you know, their two years, their hopes on this thing. And it might get moved and you might not be able to move your time off work and stuff like that. So it's just more risky. I think um, if you're not, it depends how risk averse you are. If you're all right with the risk, totally fine. It can be awesome and really fun. Things can go wrong because, you know, the crew aren't used to the ship. Sometimes things break, but that's quite fun sometimes. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Nick. It is nice to see you. You have snuck in here when there's four minutes to go at the end of the live stream. So it's very nice to see you. Oh my goodness. Were you ever a theater or drama person in school? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Uh, did you find transitioning to YouTube creator easy? I was, I, I just, I did, did maths. You know, I studied maths at university because I thought I couldn't write. I thought I wasn't creative. I never would want to be in the theater or the drama. I was in the band for a little bit, I guess, but never, never, not at all. No sort of presentation skills. No, never did any um, editing, never did any writing, never did anything like that, never studied anything like that. Um, transitioning was not that hard because I did it over, I started in 2016. So I left my day job in 2021. So I spent five years learning and building up a business. And obviously in 2020, I lost everything in terms of traffic and revenue because, you know, it was like restarting. But I had to just carry on working with the faith that everyone would come back so you know I spent five years spending all my weekends and my evenings doing this and then when I went full-time all that really changed was that I could spend my days doing it as well um I know the idea probably is not to do that and but they say you know if you give up a nine-to-five you give up a nine to five so you can work 24 <laughs> seven. That's kind of what I do because I really like it. I really enjoy it. Of course I do. <laughs> Where did your incredible communication skills come from? I guess my mom and my dad who are watching this live stream, but I never learned. I never, I've never learned. Um, and probably if you watch this live stream, you don't think I have incredible communication skills, but normally I can talk better than this. I have COVID. I've taken quite a lot of medicine and I'm doing my best. <laughs> so hopefully that's okay. Uh, Graham says, do you advocate booking early for a good cabin um, or leaving it till just before a cruise if price is more important than the cabin? It's going back to what we said earlier about how risk averse you are, um, because for me, I leave it till the last minute because I don't care where my cabin is and price is absolutely the main thing. I've never regretted that. And I've had cabins at the front of the ship, the back, underneath nightclubs, above theaters. I've had every single bad location by the stairs, you name it. And I've never regretted it. I've, I always find, you know, even if some cabins are noisier than others, this cabin might be a bit noisy, but I'm so close to the buffet or, you know, there's always something, something good, something bad. Um, but for other people, you know, if you have a reason you really want to be near the kids clubs, you've got kids or something, then book it. So yeah, it, it just depends on how much you're okay with um, <laughs> risk. Jamie says, where did you get such amazing fans from? I don't know. I don't know. But I am very grateful that you guys are out there. <laughs> well, thank you, Sam. Says you're doing great. Thanks so much. We have got um, 
one minute left on this live stream and i'm very happy that i've managed to make it through this live stream without having a sneezing fit i've been sneezing a lot today but i'm definitely on the mend i feel about 80 uh, percent better i would say so fingers crossed <laughs> rachel says when i watch british youtubers i wish that they would britishism as well I love that. Britishisms. Wish that they were Britishisms as well. We should use that as a thing. Yeah, if ever you have any questions about Britishisms, then feel free to fire them my way. Because I don't always know what is a British phrase. I need you guys to tell me so that I can put them, not put them in the videos, but so that I can explain them, if that makes sense. Um, Owen says, thanks. Hope you feel better. Thank you so much. So I will be here next week at the usual time, but the usual time it should be back to normal i think we are changing our clocks on sunday and then we'll be back in line with the us i think <laughs> so fingers crossed it'll be back to 5 p.m uk 12 p.m eastern sorry that this week's been a bit strange but i don't know why you change your clocks different time than us all of us do it at different times it's so confusing yes revising is british exactly yes revising um you don't revise we revise when we go over stuff again for, an, for a test or an exam, you study, but there's no, it, if you're studying, revise is more specific, if that makes sense. Yeah. Pasta is British, at least the way you say it. Pasta. <laughs> pasta. Pasta. Pasta, pasta, pasta. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been so much fun. This has made me feel better. Um, I will see you next week. Have a fantastic time, guys. And look out for my new video. Hopefully it'll be out. If you're watching this on replay, it'll be out already, but um, hopefully Monday for everybody and tonight maybe for early access patrons. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. <laughs>